To get started on this portion of the project, you should have already finished your basic background character of your design and also finished out an outline of that character sketch. For this part, we're going to be adding in all the rest of the details and the shadows, tones, and highlights. To get started, let's create a reference layer for our final painting. Go into your Layers panel, selecting your background, let's create one more layer on top of the background and we'll call this our reference layer. As we've done before, we want to be able to draw off any major parts of the face and make reference to where highlights are, where any major details are, or anything that will help us out for our final painting. I'm going to lock down my outline layer just to make sure I don't accidentally paint on that as well. So with the reference layer selected, let's go over and choose our pencil tool and make sure you're working with a pencil that can show up really nicely. So I'm using my little number two pencil, maybe make my line slightly larger. And let's test it out. I've got blue loaded up. I think that'll be noticeable enough for what I'm trying to do. In going through with this, all I need to do is to make highlights or make note of where highlights are, or where any kind of tonal change is. Remember, if you're having trouble locating where your pencil is, you can always hold down the caps lock and that'll help you see wherever your brush or your pencil is. In my case, I'm just making note of where there's a highlight here, there's a highlight here, it's kind of a highlight shape. I'm squinting my eyes just to get an idea of what it'll look like. So there's a highlight shape right there. When I go back in, all of this will be a lighter tone, and this will show me where a transition of a darker tone can be as well. The outlines are also a great reference to follow whenever you create your final painting. There's a highlight shape. There's a highlight shape on the top of the chin. So all of that is one particular shape. And there's a highlight a lighter shape here as well. For the hair, now, in order for the hair to be very successful, of course, we don't want to draw off every single little hair, but I can see that there's a large patch of white there. Here's a large patch of white right here, same as up here. And so I just want to treat these as individual tones. Now I can also make notations of any important shadows that I think I would like to draw off as well. So there's a darker tone of a shadow. Here's one that follows underneath here. So here's kind of an edge of a shadow. There's a little bit of an edge of a shadow right here. And there's, of course, an edge of a shadow underneath this eye too. So the whole purpose of this reference layer is simply to help you clean up and make notations once we go in and start adding the final details to your overall design. When I turn it off, it should look something like this. Now that I've got my reference layer, let's go in and add our solid base tones for each part or for the different parts of the face that we want to, move, to start painting in. We'll go to our layers now. I'm going to lock down my reference and let's create another layer underneath this one. And this will be my base tone. With this one selected, I can grab my brush tool. And with the brush tool, I'm going to make it 100% hard. And in this case, for now, I'm at least going to keep it a basic, basic round brush. Later in, we'll go in and add our tones or all the other shading and blending to it as well. Make sure your opacity is set to 100%, same way for your flow. And all we want to do now is go in and paint the base color for the entire face. To do or to select a 
good tone, you can hold down the Option key. I'm just going to select a simple middle tone of the skin tone. From here, I'll go in and paint and add in all those details. It is important that you stay close to the edges. Don't go over the edges too much, but if you do go over the edge, all you got to do is go back with your eraser tool and paint in that, or erase away that tone or that line that you did miss. Remember, you can also use the paint bucket or fill bucket trick, and that's what I'm going to be doing in just a second. So I'm going around my outlines. And once I've got the basic outline created, I can swap over to my paint bucket. With the paint bucket, make sure contiguous is turned on, but all layers is turned off. And with one click, you can quickly and easily fill in the color of the face. I can then swap back over to my brush and clean up any extra lines or any parts that I think I've missed. In this case, we'll also clean up the neck. Now for me, I'm going to create a separate base layer for the hair and one for the face. So I'm going to call this the face base, face face. And I'll do another layer for the base of the hair. Simply because both of those are both a little bit complex and I want to be able to work in both of them without having to mix or cause any difficulty with both of those. So I'm going to create a separate layer. Again, grab my brush tool and then paint in a mid-tone of that hair. So in this case, we'll get a mid-tone of gray and just paint that in and go along those lines as well. Alright, with that done, now I can turn off my base layer and that's actually open up that reference photo that we created so that we can have it as our reference off to the side. So we'll go up to File and Open. And let's locate that original character design that we created, this JPEG, and say Open to this. And let's click and drag it off to the side so we can keep it on one side as a reference. Make it a little bit smaller and also be able to draw on this as well. Now to add in those tones, here's how I would work it. First, make sure you're working on the correct layer. So I'm going to lock down the transparency for my face base, and I'm going to completely lock down my hair so I don't work on that. So working just on the face, Let's go in with our brush tool and select one of the highlight areas within here. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but somewhere in here. Hold down Option and click in that color. And for our brush settings, I'm going to keep the same brush, but I'm going to turn the opacity way down, about 10%. And I'll be adjusting the size of my brush depending on the area that I'm working on. Now using my reference lines as a guideline, this is where I can go in I'm going to use kind of a larger brush and just hit it and start to lighten up those areas. Now I'm looking at my reference and I can see most all of this face is a nice lighter area. So I feel comfortable just hitting it very slowly. You're almost sneaking up on those tones and lighten up those areas. Now I'm still looking at my reference. I want to make sure I'm not going into any areas that need to be too dark, like for instance right here next to her nose. And you can also adjust the size of your brush as needed too. So let's go in. That needs to be lighter down along her neck area, much lighter. Because we're working in 10% opacity, this is going to give you plenty of time to correct yourself. So if you do get way too light or way too dark, 
can always go back and adjust your tone and then fix it and move forward with that. Now this part here needs to be the lightest because I'm looking at my reference. All of that is closest to the light. And so I'm going to work that a little bit more and bring that forward. Same way working on our nose. Maybe get a little bit smaller brush. This is the highlight of her nose. But part of the rest of her nose is also in highlight too. Now when I painted this in, I didn't go way too bright on all of the tones. So there are definitely some areas that are near white. So I'm gonna go and pick out white as my base color. And let's go in and hit some of those brightest, brightest highlights. For instance, on her nose, right about here. Again, we're working in just a very, very low opacity and a good soft edge brush. Therefore, nothing has to blend very quickly. It gives nice, subtle transitions. And if you make a mistake, it's easy to fix and easy to correct. Adding these little bit of highlights, these little touches, is what makes your overall character really pop. With the highlights done, let's focus on doing some of the shadow areas. Again, you can hold down Option and pick up one of the shadowish areas. Now, we're not going 100% black. We simply want to go in a darker, darker tone. So something about right there is, seems to be pretty good, maybe a little bit lighter. Going back to our painting area, again, we're working in a very low opacity. So this is where we can sneak up on those shadows and we can let them blend from the mid-tone into a darker area. All of this eye socket is in shadow. So feel free to paint that as if it's getting darker. Having this contrast in tones is what's gonna give your form that three-dimensional look. This is why I always harp on having a good, good range of tones. You don't wanna have just medium tones for everything. Now, as we did with the highlights, where we went back and added a few more higher or lighter tones, let's go over to our color picker and get a few more darker tones. Notice I'm still not going 100% black, simply because there's nothing on her face that's 100% black. But there are a few areas, like for instance, right here on her nose, that I think could go a little bit darker. And so that's what we want to be able to build up on as well. Again, do make sure you've got a soft transition. This is going to keep it nice and cartoonish, but also give you that good blending ability. All right, now that we're done with that, let's go in and add the final details of the eyes and maybe clean up the lips a little bit as well. So for this, I'm gonna zoom in 
The eyes should be relatively straightforward. Remember, we want this to look cartoonish, so I don't really care about every little blood vessel highlight and everything. All I want to do is get a good solid tone. So I'm going to choose near white for my eye color. Let's bring the opacity back up to 100%. We'll paint in the whites of the eyes. I say near white for the eyes simply because we're going to do a highlight and that highlight should be the whitest white that we have. Now if you do mess up and go outside the edges, totally fine. Just grab that local color, hold down option, and repaint it in until you get the cleaned up effect that you like. And let's go in and do the dark of the eyes. And then finally, do a pure white. That's where we'll add in just a touch for that highlight. All we had to do for those. If you want, you can go in even within these and do a little bit of a shadow edge for that. And that's what I may do for her. All we gotta do is bring it down just a smidge for the tone and apply that tone in. Maybe I'll drop the opacity of my brush down. There we go, now it transitions much better. Let's zoom in and add some color to her lips. Also notice that her lips, they are not 100% the same color, but we can always start it off with that. Let's bump up the opacity of my brush. And even within the red, there's highlight edges. So those highlights are noted. And there's shadows as well. So again, choose that local color, bring down just a darker bit. We're not going 100% black, but we do want to give an idea that that color is there. Now let's back out. We can turn off our reference image you can see that she's coming along quite nicely. So we got a really good set of values, highlights, and tones. Later on, maybe we go back and clean it up. Now I want to go in and tackle her hair. The hair is exactly the same as I've done with the skin tones. We'll start off by adding a set of highlights to it and then going back in and setting, adding a set of darker values and shadows to it as well. Go into my layers panel. Choose my base layer, we'll unlock it, turn on a transparency lock. Let's completely lock down my face so I don't accidentally work on that layer. So with the transparency done, we'll go back up to here. Let's choose a highlight color for her. Make sure you've got your brush tool and let's bring the opacity way down to about 10%. Turn it back on my reference layer. Now I can go in and start adding those highlights and really brightening up certain parts of her hair.
With the highlights done now, let's go in and add some darker values. Again, I'm choosing a local color or the, the value from the reference photograph, and I'm not going 100% black. Adding these final little darker values is what's really going to make your overall hair look like it has dimension and really pop now that we're working from our mid-tones down. But make sure you don't get rid of all your mid-tones. You want to be able to see some of those values and also have it blend really well with your highlight values. All right, now that we've finished up all the basic tones, let's go in and add one more layer of final details that'll finish out the rest of our character. Going to our Layers panel, on top of our base character, let's add one more. I'm just going to call this the Details layer. Again, we want to keep that outline at the very, very top and nothing on top of this, but if you want, you can now turn off your Reference layer and see what your overall design looks without the reference being in the way. I've got my Details layer selected. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to add in just a few more uh, wrinkles and highlight areas to her eyes and also give an indication of her eyebrows. Also while I'm here, let's go ahead and give her a background layer for some of her clothing and also something for the background. So the final layer that I'll add, let's lock down all of our other layers, is one more on top of this background layer. 
This will be just our final background. Inside of this layer, we'll zoom back out. Oops, not on this one. We'll zoom, keep this one zoomed in. Zoom our reference back out and get an idea of what her clothing is. Now, I'm not going to do the full texture of her clothing, but I will grab my brush, bring it up to 100% opacity, and let's see if we can paint in some sort of suit or idea of clothing that she is wearing. I don't want this to be the main focus, so I don't want it to be too bright or conflicting with everything else that she's wearing, but we're just going to kind of rough in this. And on this side, she's got like a little collar. Since I'm working underneath all of the other layers very easily, it blends in and doesn't conflict with the hair or the painting that I've created. Now that I've got a good little suit for her to wear, that suit doesn't need to be a flat color. Let's give it a little bit of a darker edge for some shadows. And I think this edge will be in shadow as well, yeah. And if you want, you can bring your opacity down, blend it in just a bit. And let's choose the same color. Let's do a highlight type edge to it. Turn on my transparency lock. You can see how it's very rough, doesn't have to be 100% perfect. The main focus is going to be on her face anyway. Finally, I'm going to grab my fill bucket tool. and Let's give it a fill of a background color, something that will be nice and neutral gray. It can look like that, or I can go for more of a neutral Kind of tone. I think something like that actually looks pretty good for hers. Last thing I'll do is return to my details layer and clean up anything that I think needs some final details, especially if I want to do some little wisps of hair and maybe I think her eyes are a little bit off, so I'm going to go back in and fix those. And with that, now we can call it finished. Last thing I'll do is just add my signature to the end of it. Let's make it a good 100% opacity. Once you're finished, save this as a Photoshop document. So we'll go to File and do a Save As. Do make sure your name is on it. You can add your name and caricature. The file format does need to be in Photoshop. Make sure you have all of your layers. And this Photoshop file is what you'll save and upload to the Moodle page.